Hey, what's going on you guys? This is Dimitri and today we're going to be looking at a product that I've owned for a while. Uh, it's a pretty popular uh, security component. This is the Moose MPI-11 siren driver. Now this siren driver is particularly interesting uh, given the fact that it's changed a couple times. Uh, the circuit board design has not changed um, like the as far as the layout of components. However, there was a green version beforehand, uh, which I will insert a picture of right now. There was a green version beforehand that uh, was a little bit like smaller than this, uh, which I don't know. So basically what this is, if you don't know, uh, burglary alarm systems have sirens uh, to alert the neighbors or to alert the uh, occupants of the building. Uh, if there's an alarm, like a burglary alarm or a fire alarm. So uh, this would be something that would hook up to a speaker. So here I have uh, various Moose components that we'll be looking at today. This is a Moose uh, MPI-8. Uh, it is a speaker. Um, I think it's 15 watt peak. I've got the document here. I'm reading it right now. Uh, yeah, so basically what this is, is a an amplifier. So this is what actually makes the sound, and this is the speaker. So this is how, um, I guess I should say old-fashioned burglar alarms work, because you really don't see these that much around anymore. Uh, this one in particular, uh, you would hook it up to the speaker terminals. Notice it says uh, 4 ohm minimum on the speaker terminals, and you would hook it up. Polarity in this case, I believe for this speaker, don't quote me to this, but there's no markings for it, so it doesn't matter. I always put positive first and then negative, but you would essentially hook that up and then you've got a 12 volt DC input on here. So what that allows you to do is you have a steady, negative, and Yelp. So Yelp would sound like this. Steady would sound like this. And you can alternate between the two based on where you connect your positive. So your negative is your common, and you've got the two terminals for uh, either steady or Yelp, which would be your positive. Um, but I have the manuals for this here, and I wanted to go ahead and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. Let's take a look. So as far as uh, speakers that you would be able to hook up to this, according to the manual, you have two options here. You have an option, so first of all, the sound pressure level is 114 decibels at 10 feet using one 30 watt speaker and a 12 volts DC power source. So that in of itself is pretty impressive. And as far as speakers are concerned, there's multiple options that you can use and you can power up to four speakers from this unit. It draws uh, at 6 volts DC, you get about half an amp uh, for 8 ohm load, and at 12 volts DC, it draws about one and a half, uh, one and a quarter amps at 12 volts DC with an 8 ohm speaker load. So looking at the back, we have multiple uh, configuration op options. Moose actually had their own security system, so they were a security company. You had the Z1100 system, uh, Z1102, and Z1100E. These were mostly used with Moose systems, or at least that's what the intention was. Uh, the one that I have here came out of a working uh, Ademco Vista 20 from 1998, um, and essentially all you need is a 12-volt output to make this thing work. However, you have multiple options for hookup. So, the ideal hookup would be a couple 30 watt speakers and a 10 or 15 watt speaker. So the 30 watt speaker is actually known as the Moose MPI 30. So those would be more for outdoor applications. I've seen I've seen more of these things than I can count on various buildings around town. Uh, it was a way of uh, alerting neighbors and alerting uh, surrounding people that there was a burglary in progress. Um, and you can see that this would be the 30 watt version. This one, uh, it's pretty loud. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 30 watts at 4 feet, 125 decibels. So, needless to say, these things were very, very loud. Um, the way we had it configured at our house is we had about three speakers hooked up to it. We had two MPI-30 speakers on the outdoor uh, portion, so we had one over the eaves in the, uh, in the garage, and we had one over the deck. And then, of course, we had an indoor speaker. I believe it was like an ATW MS-32, one of those little square speakers over the doorbell for an indoor speaker. And the configuration for this is pretty simple. It's a pretty simple hookup. So, if you wanted to hook up multiple 30 watt speakers, when you splice them together in parallel, two 8 ohm 30 watt speakers would equal a four ohm total load. Uh, three 8 ohm 30 watt speakers, 
two in series and one parallel would be a six ohm total load. Notice that this particular unit requires a minimum of four ohms. You can't go lower than that. And I don't think you can go higher than 16 ohms because the majority of security speakers are eight ohms. Yeah, so anyway, three eight ohm 30 watt speakers uh, would equal a six ohm total load. Now, if you wanted to do the absolute maximum and piss off everybody in your neighborhood, you could have four MPI 30 8 ohm 30 watt speakers, two in series, paralleled with two in series for an all around 8 ohm total load. That's if you uh, <laughs> want a Fort Knox type of security. Um, I don't see the reason for four of these. I think minimum one outdoor, one indoor. If you wanted two outdoor, great. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I don't see the necessity unless it was a huge building like if it was a bank or something like that or if it was like i don't even i don't even know what kind of security would require four separate speakers but anyways now these days they have sirens that are all in one so you have an all-in-one self-contained unit in fact i have one to show you right now okay so the idea with a self-contained unit i have one here this is an ademco wave 2 siren let me go ahead and move this out of the way the Ademco Wave 2 is very popular. You see these all over the place hooked up. Uh, came out, I think, in late 90s, early 2000s. I want to say, I want to say late 90s. Uh, but these are basically all-in-one units. So there's no siren driver required because, if I can pop this open, the siren driver is actually built in. So notice you've got a ground, input 2, and input 1. That's for the different tones. Same general idea as a siren driver. However... Here's your speaker, and as you can see, it's already soldered to this printed circuit board down here. So the idea would be you would run a two-conductor wire from your panel, the trigger output, or excuse me, the alarm output to one of these, and you don't even have to sit there and uh, fiddle with any type of um, siren drivers, ohms, watts, volts, anything like that. Just as long as you don't overdrive your panel with current, then you should be fine. So looking at the back of this, you can see a Demco Wave Series. This is the Wave 2, I believe. And you've got number one, so input number one for a steady tone, and input number two would be for a warble tone. So those are the different channels that this offers. Same general concept as this, except this essentially takes this and this and combines it. So you would, li you would literally be left with one wire coming back to your control panel. These all-in-one units are actually pretty nifty. Uh, however, in this particular instance, with an MPI-11 siren driver, we actually had this. Now, this looks familiar. This actually looks like an Ademco 746, which is a, an 8-ohm speaker. It also looks like, I believe, Brinks has a version just like this. Um, this patent for this design was licensed out, so... In essence, you're going to see these rebranded as multiple things. This one is rebranded as ATW, but generally th these are the same thing. This is not a siren, so this is not a 747. Uh, 747 is what I've got installed upstairs on the uh, Vista 20P. This is actually a speaker. So date code, uh, April of 1996. And opening one of these up, essentially, I don't have to, but notice you've got a positive and a negative. So this is essentially just a smaller version of the MPI-8 because this is an 8 ohm 15 uh, watt speaker and this is an 8 ohm 15 watt speaker. This is just more attractive for an interior decor. So here's the problem with using an interior speaker with a siren driver. Siren drivers are very, very powerful. This thing can make sounds of up to, I believe, 120-ish, 125 decibels. At least it supports speakers that can make that loud of a noise. I believe the maximum output on this is a hundred and, or uh, it's rated at 114 decibels at 10 feet away uh, with a 30 watt speaker using 12 volts to power this thing. So needless to say, these are very loud and they're loud for a reason. I mean, the whole point of this is to get somebody's attention and uh, alert neighbors and alert people that there's an alarm, burglary or fire. So what's the issue with using an indoor speaker with, an, with a siren driver? Well, here, is the issue. These speakers are 8 ohms, just like a 30 watt speaker. So I can put, move this out of the frame to give you an idea. Here's the instruction booklet for the MPI 30. You'll notice that this is a 30 watt speaker, this particular speaker. I don't have one with me to demonstrate, but I do have pictures of one that I used to have. 
Um, and it's a 30 watt speaker. This is rated for outdoor use or in the eaves of your attic. This is mainly an outdoor speaker or for like a big warehouse. But you don't want this thing above your doorbell. So you opt in for one of these. This is also 8 ohms. However, this is 10 watts, 15 watt peak. So between 10 and 15 watts, that's a little over half of the wattage of a 30 watt speaker. And this, without some type of resistance or volume control, this would, in effect, overload one of these speakers. And you don't want to burn one of these out. You don't want to blow up a speaker in the time you need it to, you know, sound off the most. You don't want to burn it out because you're, you're essentially blowing out the speaker by providing it with too much uh, current. So to solve that, the manual actually has a very nifty solution. In the instructions for the MPI-11, I believe it's on the second page, if you look at the bottom, for hookup of a 10 to 15 watt speaker, a 5 ohm, 10 watt, wire wound resistor, part number MPI-510, must be installed to limit the current. So here you can see in the diagram, you've got your speaker output, and you've got a resistor bridging the connection, or excuse me, you've got a resistor in series with a 4 or 8 ohm, 10 to 15 watt speaker. Essentially, this is a drawing of an MPI-8. So, where do you get an MPI-510? <laughs> the answer is you don't. Uh, if you're lucky, you get one on eBay. And you'll notice over here in the notes, the recommended, it gives you the recommended 10 to 15 watt speakers. And uh, look at note number two. A 5 ohm resistor can be constructed by paralleling two 10 ohm, 10 watt wire wound resistors available through Radio Shack. Part number 271132. So in the Radio Shack catalog, part number 271132 is this little guy. This is a 10 ohm, 10 watt wire wound resistor. And uh, these things are available through Radio Shack online, or you can find them online at various uh, electronic resellers. These are not all too common. I remember I walked in and got a bunch of these at a Radio Shack in my city when it was still open. Uh, they used to have parts drawers where you would go in and you would pick these up. But these are certainly going to be a lot easier to find online than an MPI 510. I've never seen one of those in my entire life. So how would the configuration work for that? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Here I have another speaker. This is an 8 ohm speaker. Uh, it originally was a Siren. I believe it was a CNK Products SP20S. Uh, however, I'm just using the speaker portion of it because there was no siren driver when I got it. So we're going to actually pop open the cover. Notice I've got a uh, speaker wire, length of speaker wire coming out of it, and I'm going to show you how exactly you can interface this with a siren driver. Let me pop this open. So, underneath the cover of one of these, it's fairly simple. So this particular siren, actually, if you look at the speaker that's included in it, uh, it is nominal or normal 10 watts and maximum 20 watts. So this speaker actually goes up to 20 watts, which is fine. However, I still prefer uh, an opt-in to use the uh, resistance, to add some resistance to the line because I do not want to blow this up. So you can see here we have our leads coming from the speaker. We have our positive and negative connection. Now, we have our leads coming from the siren driver. So if you'll notice here, we have right here, we've got our negative and our positive. And on the positive line, it really doesn't matter what orientation you put this in, since it doesn't denote polarity in the actual manual. However, I put it on the positive line because it just seems to make more sense to me. So what I did was, is I twisted these two together. So I've got two of these wire wound resistors here, these 10 ohm, 10 watt wire wound resistors and I twisted them together on both ends and actually soldered, I had to use solder for this, the line coming from the siren driver to here. So essentially, you've got your positive and negative coming to your speaker and there's a break in the line on the positive side. And you've got these two resistors twisted together. You've got siren driver coming into one end of the resistor and out of the other end of, this, of these two resistors, you've got your positive. So that's essentially how you put resistance on the line and limit the current that's going to this speaker right here. So, in essence, that works great if you want to install one of these. Now, I'm going to tell you this. When we had this particular speaker installed with this siren driver, there were no wire wound resistors installed. So, needless to say, uh, there was no resistance on the line. However, there were two 30 watt speakers on the line, and I think in this configuration here, it's going to be the same. You're essentially going to have an 8 ohm load. This is not going to limit the ohms going to it. 
this is essentially just going to limit the watts going to the speaker, the actual power going to the speaker. You have to limit current, otherwise... So, it's fairly simple, um, but I do have a spare one of these. I have not checked online. I will check online, and if I do find anything, I'll put a link in the description or give you a general idea. All this information is going to be in the description in case you want to set this up for yourself. Um, but I do recommend using one of these if you want to protect a big house or say you own a business or a warehouse. This is still a good option. Despite the original design being from 1983, it's still a viable option to protect a large property. And it still works with most modern security systems that have a uh, siren output. Granted, it has to be a siren output that can support 1.25 amps. And I believe most Vista panels, I believe the uh, Vista 20P supports a 2 amp load. Yeah, this is how they used to do it back in the day. Before alarm dialing was a thing, uh, you would actually put one of these and install a speaker outdoors to alert your neighbors. So, um, yeah, these are available online. They're fairly inexpensive. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. That about concludes it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.